had a data protection fail personally. Raise your hands. Any data protection fails in the audience? I can see, okay, as okay. interpreter, I can see right. 10 hands. Maybe too honest. Who knows someone who has had a personal data fail? Yeah, many more hands raised. And for whom of you did were the were close relatives affected? I know your pain. I'm completely ha happy that I can introduce Alva Freude and Stefan Brink to you with the GDPR uh, fail show about GDPR, but also in freedom of information, and hopefully a very entertaining 90-minute show. An applause for these two, please. Hi. We can't see much from here. Yeah, a wonderful evening. A very nice evening to you. We'll simply start with something to loosen up, and we'll see if our technology works at the same time. Ah, no. GDPR. Privacy by design. Privacy by design. Data protection impact assessment. Te technical and organizational measures. I hate paper, red tape. Data, oh dear, data. I hate data so much. And ordering. I hate that even more. Filing and all that. It's about personal data. Name, email, account number, perhaps where they live but also age, size, and weight, and the tax number are under protection obligations. Data, yeah, data. We have to protect the data. Data is not a little thing. First, take the effort, then reap the rewards. Reap the rewards protecting data from all these hackers and spies and all that nonsense that happens if you use the same password for several services and leave your laptop open lying around or lose that paper with all the passwords on it. Data, oh yeah, data. We must protect the data. That All the data, we have to maintain them and order them, file them, file them, file them. Data, yeah, data. I love data so much. We have to maintain them and look after them. Then they are much more useful. All right, now to the foundations, the fundamentals of the GDPR and the German Data Protection Act. You have to know what you have and why and prove that they are safe. That's where why the EU had seven principles that they came up with according to which you record and transmit and establish your protection measures and these are fairness, purpose, minimization, correctness, limitation of storage, integrity and um, accountability and that's what you need for your privacy statement, data, oh yeah data, you have to protect the data. Yeah, the data, we have to maintain it and file it. We have to file it, file it, file it. Data, oh yeah, data. I love data so much. We have to maintain it and look after it. Then they are much more useful. In case we don't understand something, have a hard time interpreting the law, Data protect, Protection Commissions will help us. It's free of costs. Data, oh yeah, data. We have to protect the data. So what does that mean for you in life? I'll promise that I'll take as much care as I can. And then I can finally go back to my work. Data, oh yeah, data. I love data so much. We have to maintain it and look after it. Then they are much more useful. And finally, 
Bearbeitungsverzeichnis und an eure Datenschutzerklärung. Remember your processing manual and your privacy statement. Dann geht's los. And then we can start. Okay. Okay. Dann geht's los. Right, and then we start. So we'll start. How do we start, Alva? Well, GDPR or fails. We'll just get some victims from the audience, which will help us get the most difficult rules into GDPR and get to grips with them somehow, right? Okay, good idea. We have four chairs. Okay, I see lots of volunteers. I'm looking for four of them. Right, wow. I still don't see a lot. One person showing up, someone shouted out in the back there. That's the second one. But get onto the stage. We need two more. Okay, the third one there. Right. The last one. Last candidate. Hello. Oh, that's good. Okay, that looks good. Yeah. Andreas. Hello, Andreas. Andreas. Okay, you choose a color. There's Andreas. Sit down, please. Welcome. Stefan. Hi. Hi. Jonas. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Oli. Great. So, do sit down. Of course, I didn't remember all the names. Andreas. Jonas. Jonas. Katrin. Katrin. And and Oli. And Oli. 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 Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to remember this. Well, but these are all personal data, and these people have all invented pseudonyms, obviously. And each of you will get a sheet. Ihr kennt doch alle den Preis, oder? Kennt ihr den großen Preis? Kein Mensch kennt mir den großen Preis. Das ist eine gute Voraussetzung, eine sehr gute Voraussetzung. That's, that's very good. Oder nicht mehr geschafft habe, Wummo und Wendelin reinzuschneiden. Ja, sowas. Und die Tentakel fehlt auch. Ja, gibt's denn sowas? Ja. Okay. Uns eine Menge sehr spannende Fragen für euch ausgedacht. We've come up with some very interesting questions for all of you and uh, you all have the same chance to win. You'll be taken through two rounds and the best two will then get into the final and that was it basically. The rest will explain itself. So, shall we start? We still need four other candidates, four more volunteers, please, but you stay on stage. But you should be able to do some uh, limited amount of maths because we need people that c can calculate. From the first row, I because these people need to tally up the points, because I didn't manage to get this kind of elaborate task programmed, which is tallying up the points. We'll just get some people from the first row, they can all calculate, I'm, I'm quite sure of that. They look that way. So, who would like to count points for Andreas? You two belong together. But you are not biased, you're not related to Andreas or anything. Okay, so you'll count his points, that's not an easy feat, but there, because there will be many points, but you'll manage. And sometimes candidates will fall back to zero, but they can catch up again. To be a, a Jonas, another pseudonym. Who will count Jonas's points? Uh, you can call me Muesli as well. Do we have someone? Okay, please speak into the microphone. Second volunteer for counting Jonas's points. You just have to count. Come on. Great. So you'll count Muesli. <laughs> and you can whatever. Well, please do not treble the points, triple the points. But who will count for Katrin? Fairly, cleanly, and observantly, and doubly. No, uh, someone over there, perhaps. They all look. They're all looking away now. 
Sonst zeigen wir auf jemanden. Sollen wir auf jemanden? And we'll just point to someone. Well, that would be mean, though. Well, if the, the advantage, these people will have to stay until the end. So we'll have four people in the audience at least. Okay. You two belong together. I'm going to tell you what you have to count up and uh, you remember the points. And who will do that for? Do this for Oli? And that way we'll get the 90 minutes filled as well. Keiner. No one. Da. Over there. You two belong together. You'll count for Oli. Don't cheat. Just, and you'll all start with zero. You can all remember that. And then we will start with round one. We'll start with the very easy tasks. Uh, there's always going to be four options, four choices. And you have papers, sheets that you will hold up with the letters A to D, but the others should not see which letter you will choose. Just be secretive. Okay, we'll start easy. Alva. Who, what does data protection protect? What do you think? A, data? Is it data that's protected? Or B, security of data? Gegen was? C, what is protected? C, A, data. B, security of data. C, the offenders. Or D, self-determination about personal information. Could you repeat the question, please? Uh, what we forgot to say, each of these four has a an audience joker. Well, no, I didn't forget that. That's only in round two. So, uh, if I understood correctly, if if you ask about protecting against, is it protecting of what? So, what does data protection protect? Data, security of data, offenders, or self-determination of pers about personal information? Beep. Toot. Beep. Beautiful. These sheets are maximally transparent. And the correct answer, of course, is D, which means 23 points for Andreas. Muesli will go without. Katrin, 23, and Oli, 23. You'll all remember that. So three times 23. Okay, second question. Since when do we have data protection laws? Maybe since May 2018? Maybe since 1995? Maybe since May 1949? Or maybe since 1970? So A, May 2018, B, 1995, C, May 1949, and D, 1970. Since when do we have data protection laws? Decide now. Ah, this is less, less is spread. Great. I don't have to count it down at all. It's very simple. We'll start simply, we'll solve from the back. May 2018, yes, there was a data protection law, the GDPR, but of course that was not the first one by far. In 1995, there was the data protection directive at the EU level. Quite old, but not old enough. May 1949 was the basic law of the German constitutions in 1970. That was in fact when the first data protection law was passed in the German federal state of Hesse. So, zero for Muesli. Didn't he have D? No, he had C. Oh. Katrin, 23 to you. I don't know if it's 23 plus 23, if you can calculate that, but try. And over there, no points. Next round, Alva, come on. Next round. Who is the father of the GDPR? That's going to be very difficult. Who is the father of the GDPR? First, is that Jan Philipp Albrecht? B? Oh, we have a problem now. Is it Jan Philipp Albrecht? Slightly different spelling there. Uh, C? Is it Jan Philipp Albrecht? Or D? Is it Horst Seehofer, the current interior minister in Germany? Okay, they're all looking at the 
spelling varieties of Jan Philipp Albrecht's name. You're completely correct to take a look there. Uh, you can all decipher this, can you? So, you see the difference, don't you? Between A and B, there's another P coming. Between B and C, there's a hyphen added, or D, or C. If you choose D, it's, very, it's going to be very simple for you. Right, now, try your luck. C, Oli, come on. Oh, wonderful, you're finished. Andreas. Null Punkte. Zero points ah. for Andreas. A, wrong. Zero Katrin. points. Katrin. Falsch. Wrong. Und Zero points. And Olli got it right. B is correct. Jan Philipp Albrecht does not have a hyphen in it, his name, but two P's at the end of the Philipp. Olli, how long have you been training secretly? <laughs> not long at all. Next question. Great. Where does the number 23 come from? Where does the number 23 come from? Good question. Who can explain the number 23? Question to the audience. Who got that idea and where from? Before we just embarrass ourselves completely and, and try to tell the story ourselves, who wants to tell the story? Oh, I think he would like to. Um, <laughs> they didn't want to tell, so why, why should they tell the tale? I have no idea at all. Come on, please tell. We'll just, we'll just insert Tron, Google Tron and 23 and uh, before we say something that's wrong. Okay, next question. Which important principle has Alva learned when, I sta when he started working at the uh, data protection office from the lawyers? A, the principle. Lawyers, legal people are always right. B, it depends. C, C, well, surely it's in the law. Just look it up. Or D, we are God. Okay, the question, which important principle has Alva learned from the legal people? A, the legal people are always right. B, it depends. C, well, it's it's there in the law. Or, or D, we are God. And from now on, I will follow a strategy. Ah, a tactic. So we have one B. Andreas, 23 points to you. Maybe you should fold it up so that it cannot be seen through uh, the sheets. Muesli. Well, it doesn't have. Muesli, zero points. Katrin? Katrin? 23 points. Right, correct. And Oli again, correct again. What is the correct solution? Can you see? B. Alva, next round. Okay, Alva, next round. Ah, it's a bit shit. Which of the following cipher suits should you select? Should you choose? Auf diesem Bildschirm was anderes. Wo kommt das denn jetzt her? Where's that coming from? On that screen? There seem the last question, the previous question. Which of the following cipher suits should you select? TLS, ADC, ADC, SA with RC4128 SHA. That's A. Or B. TLS, DH, RSA export with DS40 CBC SHA. Or C, TLS, DH, ERSA with AS128 CBC SHA256. Or D, TLS, ECDH, RSA with AS256 CBC SHA384. So, vielleicht solltet ihr noch mal kurz gucken. Genau, da kommt Oder hier kommt noch mal der Monitor. Viel Vergnügen dabei. So, ohne Monitor wäre es leichter. On, without Monitor, it'd be easier. Okay. okay. Ihr konntet euch eine Meinung bilden. Und jetzt würden wir... Have you, selected, have you made your choice? Let's see your letters. Cool. cool. Oli, I can't see. Show it to me, please. 
You've got C. That's correct. 30, 23 points for Catherine. No points for Müsli and Andreas. Please resolve. <laughs> why? <laughs> okay, you just guessed. Why? Uh, the rest is just bollocks. The rest doesn't just make sense. Exactly. I could just remember the last digits, and that would be nice. In my world, not. These are all existing cipher suits, not in my world. Alvar claims that they are all real. Wer will noch RC4 als Verschlüsselungsalgorithmus nehmen? Nein, böse geknackt, nehmen wir nicht. No, it's been broken RS4. B. Ich glaube, in den 90ern oder so von der NSA geknackt war, also ich glaube, die wollen wir lieber auch nicht. B, we don't want as well. C and D, don't look that bad. D könnte man sogar als Notfall nehmen, wenn man... D you could use in an emergency if you don't... If you can't use perfect solvent forward secrecy, if you log the data and years later you get to the key, it's going to be broken. C encryption is a tiny bit weaker, but it has perfect forward secrecy. So that's better. Nobody objects. Okay. Wrong direction. Again, wrong direction. This is the correct direction. Who is juristically responsible? Legally responsible. The manufacturer, A. The Joker. A, the manufacturer. B, the organization. C, the admin. C, the administrator. D, the data protection official. Eigentlich gehört eine Geschichte dazu, die habe ich jetzt vergessen zu erzählen. Eine Behörde. We have a story. We can tell it. Eine Software einsetzen und diese Software ist dafür bekannt, dass sie. An office wants to use a software which has data leaks to somewhere. Some call it telemetry. And somebody says, that's not allowed. And who is responsible? The responsible oversight agency says, that is not allowed. Now, where does the agency turn to? Whom does the agency turn to? Who is responsible? Habt ihr alle was gewählt? Ich breche aus meiner Strategie nur Arzt zu wählen aus. Aha, das scheint mir eine sehr gute Strategie. Nämlich der andere. I'm stopping my strategy to select only A. Andreas hat zugeschlagen. 23 Punkte. Katrin, genau. Answer B is correct. Super. 23. Whoever decides what to use is responsible. The organization, for example, a company. If you as a data controller use software, you are responsible. This round is up. Let's see what the title is. The points. 92 points for Andreas. Worth an applause. Müsli, das kann nicht viel weniger sein. Wie viele Punkte hat Müsli? Müsli, not much less. 23 points for Müsli. Wer hat für die Katrin mitgezählt? Who has counted for Katrin? 125 points for Katrin. Und der Olli hat wie viel? Oli, how much? Ja, eben. <laughs> das habe ich auch gerade festgestellt. Yes, of course. Oh, you get the 50 euro later. The, the insecurities in communication. 
bitte für seine 115 Punkte. How many points? Well, uh, the audience members said 125, but that's not a multiple of 23, so it was corrected to 115, and the 50 euro um, f uh, fee will be handed over later. Okay, so now there's going to be a Jeopardy style panel to ch select ch questions from data fails, fake news, hacker information, freedom of information, and question mark are the categories, and there are different values, of course, to choose from. And if you lose your category, then uh, you'll be uh, you're having a hard time. So there are certain risk fields hidden here, and where you have to uh, gamble a certain amount of points. And there are a few jokers in there, and a few surprises that we will just not mention at this point. Katrin. And there is risk hidden, and that means that the number that's shown here does not apply. You select which, how many of your points you want to gamble. Now, those that get it wrong will be taken down, but due to the great counting method of your calculator, you're in front, so you choose. So is the audience joker now active? Yes, one time you can ask the audience if you don't know. And those that those who, whose turn it is can also pass on the turn to whoever shows up first. Okay, I see. So you can always pass without losing points, but if you show up and get the wrong answer when the question is passed, then you will lose points. And what do we do if no one's showing up? Okay, we'll see. Katrin. You go. Data fails 64. Okay, let's see if your construction works. Yes. This is a question that you will read out. Okay. Hashing uh, and person, uh, personal relation. Let's imagine an, an enterprise is building uh, some telephony app and, and records email addresses and phone numbers and says these are not personal data because we've hashed them with SHA-256. Now the question, are these data anonymous or personal and why? Those hashed data. For whom? For the authority that is sending the data or the organization that's re that receives them? For the processor of those data, so the company that has calculated the hash. All that's left is the hash. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be a hint. First, you'll have to say, do you accept the question or are you going to pass? I'm going to accept the question, uh, Jonas. There is, is this an exclusive or an inclusive or? That can be important. Well, you always have to remember he plays against you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So now would be the moment for you to answer the question. Well, we just talked about the SSA two five five six hashes and said that that is actually in a one-way road. There's no way back. So in that regard, you can't get back from to the phone numbers from the hash. That's what you said when we had this other question. Did I say that that hashes cannot be reversed? So you say it's anonymous? No, well, that's why I'm asking. For whom? And not uh, for whom is it anonymous? Because the number that calculates the, the, the company that calculates those hashes may still have the key for that lying around and could reverse it. Uh, there are, are there keys with hashes? There are no keys. I, 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 I was thinking of cryptography. Uh, they're not salted and not peppered either. I have been debating with many people whether a hash is still personal or anonymous, and my belief is that 
it's anonymous, but there's always two different opinions. So you decide. It depends. Uh, yeah. Uh, the answer is it depends, and we will exclude the Interior Minister Horst Seehofer. Okay. So question is this data anonymous or personal, and why? And that irritates me. This and why? Because I would say anonymous, but the and why would only make sense if personal would be the right answer. No. Is it a trap? Well, personally, I believe that hashes of this quality are anonymous data. How quickly will you calculate 10 million hashes uh, back into a phone number? One hour was the case with SH8256. How many phone numbers do we have in Germany? It's not so many. I don't know, 100 million, a, a billion maybe? So a few seconds you will need. So, so sadly, no, that's wrong. You just simply by brute force, you can try out the hash for all the phone numbers, and once you hit it, you, hit it, you have the right number. It's a bit more difficult with passwords, but a simple example, and that has been uh, subject to a court decision. Maybe you've heard of a Facebook custom audience where you can trans transfer hashes of email addresses to Facebook and the colleagues in Bavaria uh, prohibited local companies to supply Facebook custom uh, audiences with uh, email lists and transmit that to Facebook. And what is it used for? It's used by Facebook to then match which people are registered with the same email address. So, in effect, the company will give the information to Facebook that this person is our customer, whether it's by hash or by direct email address, is doesn't really matter at all because Facebook can always use the email addresses of the customers they know about and calculate the same hash. And that's why these companies were prohibited from, from transferring the data. And the uh, Bavarian Administrative Court, the highest administrative court in Bavaria, in Munich, did confirm this decision. So hashes of email addresses and phone numbers are personal data. Okay, let's go a bit slow, Ava. So 64 points down. That's the difference between plus and minus. Do you know about it? From the 125, right? Well, <laughs> let's move on. The next round. So, right, what is left? I think it's Andreas' turn now. You choose. Okay, I'll use information freedom 23, freedom information 23. Anonymous application. So we're in the area of freedom of information. So it's going to be the reverse game. It's not about what the state wants, knows about uh, it registers of, of our data, but what we want to know from the state. So we ask about data and ask the authorities to hand out data. The question is, can I? And submit such an application anonymously? Can I submit it in a way that the authority does not know who is applying and does that, do they still have to process the application, Andreas? What do you think? Is that a question for you or will you pass? Well, I'll just consider how I will do this, how I would get the, re the, the reply. Because with Frag den Staat, that might be a nice idea. If I could still then, as an applicant, be identifiable, I would just guess and I think that it's a good question, <laughs> because, well, the legal system in Germany uh, does always feature an applicant. I'll just pass the question on. Ah, he passes it on. Who wants to answer it? 50-50 chance. 50-50 chance. Olli, you say something. Oh. Okay. 23. Okay. I'll take it. And what's your answer? I'll answer that the question is no. Uh, the application does cannot be processed further if the applicant is anonymous. I don't know if I should do it. Do you need to give a reason? No. No, you don't have to because it's actually wrong. So 23 points deducted. Negative. You can submit freedom of information requests anonymously. Many authorities do not know this. Many authorities will then ask back, who are you? And you can respond, no, you cannot ask that. Anonymous applications work, but 
The state laws are improved, in quotes, because anonymous applications are being forbidden in certain German federal states. That is quite mean, but that's the exception to the rule. The rule is that applications can be handed in anonymously if you use Frag den Staat, the website, the well-known website. They are offering that service of handing in your request anonymously. Right, Stefan, you can now choose. Okay, um, okay, I'll choose um, the 128. Hmm, yeah. Common data leaks. We often hear about data leaks. And we often, very often hear about disks who, uh, which were lost, or CCBCC errors in emails, or hacker attacks. But, but the most common thing is missing here. What's the most common thing? This is clear, CCBCC is clear, because um, the, the recipients see all the other recipients, and hacker attacks are hard to explain, but you know, the, these are the most common, except for the really most common one that's still missing. So everyone thinks about where is the most common data leak. Unverschlüsselte um, emails. I guess the first thing would be not encrypted emails, unencrypted emails. Missly. I shouldn't ask questions. Also, how, how they're reported or how, how they actually happen. So, uh, by the GDPR, data leaks have to be registered, reported, and also the the things that the company did so that it won't happen in the future and a couple of other things for example if we say that doesn't suffice so which so which is the most common way for data leaks to happen I would guess loss of personal data, but, but, but that's a data leak. Ah, okay. How, how did it happen? What activity led to this? I guess hacker attack is also undefined. The right solution isn't on the board. Yeah, no. I guess it's companies that accidentally leak email or password data to a GitHub account or networks. I still have a question. You say data leaks, but could it also happen analog? In other media. Well, then I guess it's just um, a business card, exchanging a business card with data. It's just business dates and um, business cards that are exchanged, and it happens there. So the real answer is. The but I'm looking for it, but everyone knows it, right? It's, it's the wrong um, the sending of personal data to the wrong recipients. It might be uh, wrongly addressed a mail or an email or a fax. All of these happen very often, hundreds of thousands of times. We wanted to sense the prescription to the pharmacy, but uh, we sent it to the wrong person. It wasn't 
in there in all your answers. So I guess we won't deduct points from anyone. So maybe as background, that's just the most simple thing, thing that can happen. For example, doctors that send the reports to the wrong recipient. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, how many possible recipients are there? That yeah, doesn't really happen. They say it isn't really high risk. So. Yeah, you, s you still have to inform the actual victims of the data leak, but most people don't do that. Can I tell you an anecdote? I'm, I have contacts with some of the people who are involved with this, and then I talked about exactly this example and then what happens if the doctor what happens if the uh, if you sent the wrong report the report to the wrong person and two of the people who were there just happened to them so when yeah, in conclusion, this really happens way too often. So, Andreas asked what happens with the, these data leaks. So, people have to report them the, the data leaks to us. So, that's um, Article 34 or 35 of the GDPR. If it happens to bigger groups, um, it depends on how the the report is delivered to the affected people. S sometimes you have to think about a fine if it if the data leak was really severe. That, re that reminds me. It's 34 and 33 and not 35 in the GDPR. But email encryption, that's, that's uh, something I really like because that's a data leak that probably happens a lot, but um, it's, never reported. it's never reported. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. 1024. I actually wanted data phase, but we never had the question mark, so I'll pick that. So what's behind that? Question mark 1024. Oh. Ah. Right. Risk. Risk. So we'll, I'll just fix this. Do I have to look at this whole stuff now? No, that won't help you at all. I, sorry, I don't know the question myself. I haven't got, I hadn't, didn't. <laughs> Memorize it. Okay, what about this template? I have to expand it. Uh, we'll, okay, now I can reload. I thought that was the question. Oh dear. Right. Um, can you just tell a story or something? So we had question mark 1024. Oh yeah, that's a little movie that you are about to, that you should show. Now show us a movie a by Mr. K from B. Risk instructions. In which areas can the Federal Data Protection Commissioner instruct? The data commission, the federal states, data protection commissioners in the German federal states. In which areas can the? Okay, a question. Maybe one or other will recognize this guy. No, 
Not, not bad. I just have to search that video. That wasn't the plan to show it now. And what is risk? Risk, yeah, what does it mean? Risk means that you have to choose how many points of your 1024 you want to gamble, all of them. Uh, you could gamble 1024 points if you had. Ne do negative points exist? We'll ask Muesli. Still 23. Do you want to gamble all of them? He'll end at zero and, and that will be it. But if you. So for 23 points, we'll just listen closely. That's the German Data Protection Commissioner Ulrich Kelber. My name is Ulrich Kelber. I am the German Data Protection Commissioner. I turn it down too much. Let's restart. Yeah. Right. My name is Ulrich Kelber. I'm the German Data Protection Commissioner for Data Protection and Freedom of Information. Now, my question about GDPR and the Data Protection Act, in which areas can the German Data Protection Commissioner instruct the federal states Data Protection Commission? It's not that I heard this, but <laughs> it was in the slide earlier. <laughs> Maybe we should add that these 1,024-point questions were all rather difficult. Now, the question, of course, is... You have 10 seconds. Okay, so long can I not. Okay, I can't blow that long. No, the question from Mr. Kelber was, in which areas can the... Federal Data Protection Commissioner instruct the German Federal State Data Protection Commissioners. What areas actually exist? Which legal areas, legal issues, you could say, in which issues can the instruction be made? Maybe we can. Maybe we can. Uh, give a hint about the number of areas of the binary numbers. Uh, there are many options there. No. Uh, no, forget that hint, no. Now you, you should reach your answer. Audience joker, great. Do you still have this? Okay. So, how should we do it? Does anyone know? Let's look through the audience. The angel with the microphone will now look for someone who knows, and otherwise we'll just vote. Who wants to step into the breach for Muesli? He will have to, of course, decide whether he will accept the answer. Someone is showing up in the very back. Okay, where was that raised hand? Let's hope that we found someone who knows. It's a clearly answerable question. Well, since I haven't got so many points to lose, I will say zero. Yes, correct answer. So, 1,024 points for Muesli. No, 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 23. 23. He only had 23 points to gamble. It was the risk question. You had to gamble a certain number of points. Because that question was far too simple for 1024. It was, it was because someone knew the answer. So, now let's explain. The Federal Data Protection Commissioner has no relation to the Federal State Data Protection Commissioners. There are different areas. The Federal Data Protection Commissioner is many tasked with federal authorities and the data protection there. And the Federal State Data Protection Commissioners are involved with data protection at the Federal State. Uh, organizations, authorities, and also have supervision about private enterprises. So they deal with everything that uh, takes place in terms of private data processing. The Federal Data Protection Commissioner has a small area where he will deal with telecommunication law, uh, but mainly the areas of supervision are completely separate. So he has nothing to tell us, and we have nothing to tell him. So the answer zero is completely right. And uh, it was. There's no area in which instructions can be made. Okay, great. 
Wir müssen wissen. You can now choose the next question. We'll have to speed things up a bit. Hacker. Okay, Hacker. Which number? How much? Oh, me again. Uh, okay, I'll choose uh, 1024. <laughs> You're really on a roll here. Okay. Oh, oh ris risk again. How much do you want to bet? All 64 points, or I really, I, I didn't come up with a hacker question that I uh, was sure that no one could answer. Okay, I'm I'm gonna bet all of them. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I have to tell you something. This is a risk question. How many questions? Uh, how many points do you want to bet? 64. Okay, I first have to tell the story. Uh, a HR member of the company has a suitcase in a car. It, it was a locked case in a locked car. The suitcase was lost, or rather stolen, uh, including the uh, laptop. Ten days later, the company receives a blackmail. Please send us X number of bitcoins, probably in the hundreds of thousands, at the address, blah, blah, blah. And the blackmailer was sending personal data that was on that laptop, so HR payroll information. And 24 hours later, the company reports a data breach or a data leak. Uh, can the A governance organization, uh, the supervising authority, uh, impose a, pen a penalty. So the question is, what's the reasoning? Uh, who do they have to inform? Do you want to solve it? Can the supervising body impose a penalty? Do I have to? Do I have to solve all of them? Okay, I'm, I'm passing. Ich würde sie nehmen. Ja, dann nehmen Sie Katrin. I'll take it. Dann gibt's aber auch nur 46 Punkte. But then you, you only get 64 points, right? Because he bet 64. Why am I getting his points? Aber ich will noch mal auf null zurück. Okay, I want to go back to zero. Okay, okay. Ich jetzt 64. Also so viel mehr. Okay, I only got some 50 something. So. Also, kann hier so. auch Can the supervisory authority impose a penalty? Yes, because usually after 24 hours the breach has to be reported. And either there was a, a, a bad cryptography on it, even if they got the laptop, obviously they could read it, so that's a problem in itself. The company has to, at a minimum, inform the, the, the body, because there is a HR, or rather personally identifiable information on it, for example, health-related information, so... I would assume that the relevant people had the data on their laptop, so all of them have to be informed. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I didn't take that question. Yeah, I really think we can award all 64 points to her. Oh, okay, next question, next round. What do we learn from this? Yes, encrypt your notebooks, otherwise this could be very expensive. It happens all the time. It's not just laptops, also stationary uh, desktop computers. It's really not that hard anymore to encrypt it. Yeah, please also encrypt all of the USB sticks. And if you find uh, a USB stick on the parking lot, please don't just put it into the slot. <laughs> you can choose. Uh, freedom of Information 64. Infofreiheit Länder. Uh, information, uh, freedom of information for uh, on a state level. So I have to improvise a little bit to find the right video here. Hello, my name, Hello. Is, Isabel my name is Isabel Gross. I'm ref uh, a referent in the uh, Data Protection Agency in, this, in Hessen. Its data protection is important, but not. Uh, Uh, given how many country uh, how many states have not uh, passed a law regarding data governance and data security how many 
How many states in Germany do not have an Information of Freedom Act yet? I want to pass. Okay, so there are 16 states during our last census at least. Which one of those doesn't have a Freedom of Information Act yet? For 64 points? Where were we? Yes, 64 points. Yep. So, what about my points now? So, you passed. Yeah, nothing happens for you. You have the same state. Who wants to solve it? Okay, special offer. Who can at least name one state that doesn't have a Freedom of Information Act yet? Come on, someone. Who's the, who's the first one to name one? Bayern. <laughs> oh, yeah, Bavaria. Bavaria is right. Okay, what else is there? Bavaria? Lower Saxony? Yeah, they're, they're working on a draft. Saxonia, yes, right. If Bavaria doesn't have it, then obviously Saxony doesn't have one either. That sounds fair. That's 64 points for Katrin. Next round. Still your turn. Choose. Let's take fake news 42. Fake news 42. Oh, der Kindergarten. Ah, the kindergarten. We're looking for the kindergarten. Ah. This looks good. Hello, my name is Wolfram Banner. I'm mayor and I got the following question very often. My child was photographed in the kindergarten and now it's in the internet. Is that allowed? So, Katrin, möchtest du lösen? Katrin, do you want to solve? No, they're not allowed to do that. It's okay if you do f photograph in the kindergarten, it's fine, but if you upload it somewhere in the internet, on social media or somewhere, I've totally lost, so that's not allowed. Perfect, Katrin. That's 42 points for you. Super, du bist immer noch dran. Du machst das hier ganz still your turn. Do you can you still get, uh, keep count? Let's take question mark 42. That looks interesting. Joker. You're on a roll. Oh, you just get 64 points. 42 points. Catherine, go on. Dann tauscht mal gerade die Mikros. Habe ich irgendwo drauf gedrückt, kann auch sein. Ähm, Press hier. somewhere. Danke. Äh, ähm, äh, das ist also schön bunt hier. Äh, Informationsfreiheit 1024. Oh. Freedom of Information 1024. Jetzt willst du es wissen. Now you wanna. Das ist eine wirklich schwierige Frage. That's a really difficult question. In which country, which country has passed the first law for freedom of information in the world? In which year? Audience joker. And in which year? And in which year was it passed? So, audience joker. Who knows it? Who can? Who can tell Catherine? All the way back there. Now I'm very interested how this will work. So the first Freedom of Information Act worldwide. Nein, nein, welches Jahr? 1766, hat er gesagt. Das war 1766. I probably know who that was. 1024 points for Catherine. What was the country? Sweden. Okay. 
Okay, many greetings to fragdenstaat.de, the FOI platform in Germany. Right, many thanks, whoever it was, I didn't see. Oh, thank you, I'll donate some money. Okay, now let's take something I surely don't know, Hacker42. Changing passwords. Ah. After which period of time admins should uh, make users change their passwords? How often, how often should passwords be changed? Oh, I'll solve. Uh, actually, until a f some short, short time ago, the standard term was three months, but since shortly, it's just uh, regarding any issues, any incidents, or so maybe there is no time period at all because short time periods will lead to people writing passwords down and, and, and pitting them to the screen. Alva, correct. And if your admin in your company somewhere tells you to change your passwords every 30 or 90 days or something, then point them to our password guidelines, which you can get from our website, where it says, no, you shouldn't enforce password changes only if there is a reason, an occasion. So that was as many as, how many was that? 42 points, right? Yes, 42 points. You'll keep the tally, you can do sums above a thousand, surely. Katrin, just continue. But, well, maybe someone else. You can pass on the question. Okay. Freedom of information, 128. In freedom of information and human rights or basic rights. A last little question. Is there a basic rights to freedom of information in Germany? We've all learned that the right to information and self-determination is a basic right as determined by the German Federal Constitutional Court, but the right to get information from authorities, Katrin, it's good that you are a legal expert, is that a basic right? I pass. That's a clever decision, Andreas. I'll take that question and I'll say no, because it's not in the basic law in the Constitution, but it's in the Freedom of Information Law, which is a federal law, but not a basic law. Nice try, but sadly wrong. In Freedom of Information is a basic right. It's in Article 5 of the Constitution, where it says that people can inform themselves from public sources, what you said about uh, the, the interplay between uh, state laws, uh, which are the FOI laws, uh, and German basic rights. At the time a p state passes uh, a freedom of information law, that uh, the, the data becomes a public source and you then have a constitutional right to access that source. So sadly we'll have to deduct points from you. 128. Do you still have any? No, none. So, zero points. We have two people from at zero. You are out and Oli. How is he doing? 92. So, everything's still open and in the running there. Because you gave such a nice answer, you can choose the next question. What do you want to have? What do you choose? I'll take Hacker 64. So, he, Hacker 64. Well, and a, when you have a hacker attack, an attacker uh, took the email address of a customer of an online shop and copied it. Tell us three important measures that the shop owner has to take now. Do you want to solve, Andreas? So the first two I would probably come up with, but the third, uh, I'll just pass. So who wants to solve now? 
Ah, Nehme ich mal. Um, okay, I'll take it. Er muss die betroffenen Kunden informieren. Yeah, they have to inform the customers. They have to inform the authorities. And they have to invalidate the uh, login credentials. Well, I was actually waiting for a different one, but yeah, that's okay. That's all right. Give them the points. Das erste war, um, er muss so, the, the first one would have been, yeah, well, obviously uh, mitigate the, the problem, i.e. solve the leak or the, 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 the red vector. So how many points was that? It was 64, right? Yeah, 64. For Müsli. So you can also choose the next category now. Fake News ist noch abzuarbeiten. Well, we still have to do fake news. There's a lot of them. Can, can, can we look at... Oh, well. I'll take the 128. Fake News 128, das ist ein Joker. Okay, it's a Joker. Nice. 128 Punkte oben drauf. Jetzt hast du den Olli schon wieder hinter dir gelassen. So schnell geht das bei uns. Nächste Runde, such dir das nächste Feld aus. Ja, ich versuch's. Okay, I'll try. Am besten noch mal Ich nochmal. Um, oh. Ja, wo könnte noch ein Joker sein? Oh. Uh, uh, data leaks 23. Ha. Huh. Das erste Bußgeld willst du? So the first fine imposed on a company in Germany. Massiv erhöhte Bußgelder. So since the latest uh, change in the law, the, the fines were raised massively. So there was a first fine. Uh, imposed by the uh, the state commissioner for data protection in Baden-Württemberg. So what was that about? What was the first fine done for? It was on Heise. Obviously no one wants to have it. So It was uh, the platform called Knuddels. What they did was they had unencrypted passwords on the database and it, it was 80,000 euros and 20. It was 20,000 euros as a fine for having clear text passwords saved in their database that were copied. <laughs> Is it possible for me to know that website with my age? Well, it depends. It could be difficult. It depends. Can we ask you for your age? Nah, rather not. Horst <laughs> Seehofer knows about it, so... 23 points for Catherine. Okay. You're calculating, right? Data fails 42. Das Klassenbuch. Ah, das ist auch hübsch. The class book. Wo ist das Klassenbuch? Translator doesn't know the regist the translation of it's a book where the behavior of pupils is registered by the teacher at school. At the data protection agency. Or the class book has been lost. Do I have to report a data fail? Oh, this is a very good question. I have to ask the colleagues. Come here, can somebody help me? Catherine, möchtest du lösen? Catherine, you want to solve? Also, ihr meint der Grund und Hauptschule hinter Tupfingen. Diese diese Kladde, die halt immer von Lehrer. In the elementary school hinter Tupfingen. Und wer nicht das? Zum Beispiel? Zum Beispiel. Uh, Class book registers who's there and who was missing. Ich würde sagen. I'd say. Es ist echt schwierig. Very difficult. Normally, I'd say, okay, it, it, there's no automated data processing. It's just in a book. But it's systematic. It's ordered. It's class books are the epitome of systematic order. That's right, and that's full marks for Katrin. 
zur Erklärung, so. vielleicht unter die, unter die Datenschutzgrundverordnung fallen also nicht nur automatisiert äh, verarbeitete Daten, sondern auch... So, GDPR does not just protect automatically registered data, but all kinds of data that are systematically collected and completely rightly you said that Uh, that the systematic order of information in a class register is something you can imagine, so that is a breach that has to be reported. And if that would be a repeated problem at the uh, primary and secondary school of Hintertupfingen, we would have to look into that and see if maybe we sh need to do something more. Okay, let's take the question marks again, 128. Question mark 128, now that is... An urn has been washed ashore. Alva, möchtest du Alva, do you like to tell the story? At a beach, an urn washes ashore, and the number of the uh, of the cremation can be found read on the urn. Is that personal data? The cremation number may be registered in some kind of list somewhere, and that might lead to the per, to the name of the deceased. Now, Katrin, would you like to solve this? Ah, you're Ah, you're conferring. That is quite perfidious. 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 Uh, I just wanted to see if I should pass on the question to someone who wants to earn a few points with it. Um, but uh, in some uh, cemetery register, that is not very unique. Well, but the person in this urn is dead. Uh, mostly that is the case, yes. So, and, and GDPR would only protect living people. Great. Katrin. Full marks, 120 points to Katrin. Add that to the tally. That is the fact. And they, the GDPR does not apply to deceased people. That is the lesson to learn from this question. Next question. Next round. Okay, let's uh, finish off in Freedom of Information. So, Freedom of Information 42. It's a guesstimation question for everybody. So everybody has to do a guesstimate and the question is how many uh, countries in the world have Freedom of Information Acts? There is uh, free information I'm going to give you. There are roughly 193 countries in the world. So the question is how many of those have passed a Freedom of Information Act? The one who's closest gets the full marks. Andreas, I'm going to choose 58. I'm going to say three. <laughs> okay. Katrin? Katrin, three. Okay. Katrin? 42. Oli? What happens if I also say 42? No, oh, well, then we do a tie breaker. So, for tactical reasons, maybe choose 41 or 43. So, he chooses 43. Clear victory for Andreas. It is 130 roundabout. So, with your 58, you were actually pretty bad, but you're still closest. So, four points for Andreas. Und du darfst ja auch die nächste Kategorie aussuchen. And you may choose the next category. Dann poker ich mal hoch und nehme Daten. I'm pokering and using data failed wow. 1024. Oh, jetzt wird's ganz schwierig. Maximum fine. Und zwar die Frage stellt sich. The question is. How high exactly is a maximum fine for a non-reported data fail? Willst du lösen? Ich nehme einfach You want to solve? Joker, obwohl ich eine Idee habe, in welche Richtung es geht. I have an idea, but I'm still gonna use my audience Joker. I'm pretty sure that some people, that several people know the exact number. Vielen Dank. Und deswegen. Oh, you stored that. 
Wer kann dem Andreas helfen? So, who can help Andreas? Ja, da meldet sich ein ganz also, mutiger. Wie da meldet sich someone is piping up. Andreas. Du. Wie Andreas, you choose. 20 Millionen. 4% of was revenue, yearly revenue. Darf ich rein Interesse halber fragen, was du... Or 20 million, whatever is higher. I'm sorry, I didn't get the number. Ist nämlich beides falsch. It's both wrong. Ich glaube nämlich auch, dass es 2% sind. Das ist richtig. It's 2% of, ye of, of yearly revenue. Ganz hervorragend, Andreas. He's laughing. Andreas. Aber die Regeln sind, wie sie sind. The rules are as they are. You just lost 1024 points. Your own fault. The maximum fine is the so called small fine. Real bad errors cost 4%. Formal errors cost 2% of revenue, yearly revenue. 10 million in dem 10 million is the dann sind 2% des weltweiten Jahresumsatzes well, lower limit. Das ist das maximale Bußgeld, das man verhängen kann. Hast du sehr gut gewusst, aber gut, alle Punkte dabei verloren. But lost all points. You may choose. Okay, I'll go high and take 1024 again, GDPR. So, that is my favorite question. I'm not going to spill it, spoil it. Just ask the question. When did the GDPR come into force? We would like the exact date, please. 23. Mai 23rd of May 2018. Das hört sich, das ist That's, it's quite a good answer. I would have said 25th of May. Well, May 2018 sounds very good, but unfortunately it's wrong. 24th of May 2016, what I would have said. Or, or is it 25th of May 2016? Is May correct? Well, decide anyway. It's what, 2016. We are not happy with just a year. We want the exact date. One will give us the month, the other the date, and the other person the year. 21st of May. Would anyone else like to lose all their points? Katrin, would you like to solve this or what are you going to do? Uh, we'll chat. Uh, it will be in force as it is published in the European uh, Register, right? And that was in 2016. That was when the uh, date of the GDPR was uh, finalized, the negotiations, and it was then published in the Register of Laws, and that's when it came into force. It wasn't the 25th of May 2018. That was the moment when it became effective. It was in force. It was out there, but it became effective at, on the 25th of May 2018. We asked about the coming into force, and that, in fact, was the yes now. Wasn't it something strange like the 45th day after publication? So that's, that's Article 99, right? Now you only need to know what the 45th day after publication was. Oh, come on. The 1,024 questions are extremely hard. So I would suggest that you would not want to pass uh, answer question. Yes, all right. Alva, which day in May was it? It was the 24th. 24th of, on the 20th day after publication in the register, it was published on the 4th of May, 16th or 16th or 17th of May. It was passed. Didn't I say 24th of May 2016? Yes, you did, but you then decided not to answer the question. Oh, you are evil. We are the supervisory authority. But at least you'll get to choose the next question. Okay. I'm going to choose Hacker 128. Okay, Hacker 128 is another joker. Oh wow. Okay, are you still keeping track? Okay, this is uh, getting close. Okay, let's choose uh, question marks uh, 64. 
So this is about scoring and your residential address. Is it allowed to use um, the information that the person lives in a high-rise building f uh, when calculating the score value and if it's detrimental to the score that the person gets. So these kind of scoring systems, they try to determine if you're uh, solvent, if you can uh, pay for your bills. So there are companies like Schufa, that's the most important one, that um, creates a score. And the question now is, if they calculate the score, are they allowed to take into account the effect that they're living in a high-rise building? So, for example, if someone lives in a, a detached house or in a semi-detached house, um, that's probably a better value. So, Kashin, do you want to answer? I'm passing. <laughs> so, please choose someone who actually has a score already. I, I probably already have a pretty bad score, but I'd say, in principle, yes, it's probably disallowed to choose the residential address, but in this particular case, it's not about the address itself, but rather about some property of that. So, in this case, I'd say yes. And yeah, this is something we can count, yeah. It is allowed to count that information. There is the, another problem. It's not allowed to choose uh, to, um, to calculate the score with just this information. If someone thinks this is unfair, please write to the Schufa. So I just want to uh, say that I've, I've asked the Schufa before how they calculate the score, and I'm still waiting for the answer. There is actually very interesting legislation. Um, a very interesting ruling by the uh, Constitutional Court, and they say that this is uh, a trade secret of the Schufa, and they don't have to tell you. We actually have the Open Schufa project, and they should actually have to. Uh, they could force them to come up with the secret, and yeah, this is another one of those things where we use Frag den Staat. And we want to encourage you to participate in this, to give them some some more uh, questions that they can ask to the state, where they can try to figure out the uh, method for creating the score by the Shufa. So, Andreas, your turn. Well, <laughs> there's not much left. I'm choosing fake news 64. True or false, and why? Hier kommt die Frage. <lacht> Müssen seit der Datenschutzgrundverordnung Vermieter die Klingelschilder alle Do landlords have to screw off the doorbell shields since the GDPR has gone into effect? Do landlords have to remove Doorbell shields. Das abgeschraubt werden. Es gibt Vereine, äh, zum Beispiel Haus- und Grundeigentümervereine Baden-Württemberg, die haben genau das von sich gegeben. Die Frage ist nur, stimmt das? Fordert die is this correct or not? Oder fordert die Datenschutzgrundverordnung das nicht? Andreas. Selbstverständlich nicht. Ähm Sehr schön. Andreas says, no, they don't have to be removed. 64 points for Andreas, correct. Das sehe ich jeden Tag. Sehr schön. Da gilt der alte Merkspruch, wenn etwas verrückt His double shield is still there. If it sounds silly, it's not data protection. It's your turn. Okay, I'll just take the three question marks, 23. Actually, there's an exclamation mark in there. Two question marks, one exclamation mark, 23. Photos. Okay, we're dealing with photos again. Is the audience allowed to take photos from us of us on the stage here? Well, according to camp regulations, come on, come on, hold on, Andreas. Would you like to answer the question? I would answer yes, because we are part of a public event with the respective uh, consent. Is that your final answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only 23 points, so uh, yes, I'll stick with it. Alva, I will accept that, yeah. I just wanted to raise the tension a bit. Uh, 
Uh, yes would have been enough, even if the introduction meeting said that uh, you have to ask before taking questions, yes. But that is house law or house rules. Uh, the organizers can say that you can only take a photo after you've called out the German interior minister Horst Seehofer's name three times. They are allowed to do that, but what is legally permissible uh, is another question and legally yes of course it is allowed to take photos of anyone you want the question the problem only arises when you want to distribute those photos and and that's where data protection comes in but beforehand taking photos is fully allowed a difficult question because many out of fear or ignorance start to prohibit taking photos in schools for example and so school directors say you're not allowed to take photos anymore completely superfluous, that's nothing to do with data protection at all. Uh, you can take photos of your own children and other people's children as long as you don't publish them online. What is prohibited is publishing those photos without consent by the parents, for example, but the actual taking of photos is always allowed. Very little, small restriction. If you somewhere photograph your neighbors in secret through their uh, s uh, bedroom window, that is probably a, a breach of personality, right? But in terms of data protection, you can take photos as much as you want. Take, keep them to yourselves. You can look at them as often as you want. But as soon as you want to publish them online, you have to obtain consent or have to have, to have a contractual basis or something like that. So we have a public event here. Well, so public for an entrance fee of 295 euros, I think that is a rumor. Well, public doesn't mean it has to be free of charge. It just has to be uh, that people can participate uh, on a general basis, even in a public bath where there's an entrance fee, this is a public place. We're talking about the data protection law, though, not about the rights to your own image or something, like that, because I'm just get, get, gaining here uncredulous glances. That is the difference between data protection law and personality law. Yes. We'll get to almost to the end. We have two questions left. Andreas, your turn to choose. Okay. No matter how much I get right now, you're still ahead of me, so I'll choose Hacker 23. So. Das hatten wir schon. Oh, we had that one. Ah. Okay. Oh, that's how, how is that possible? Moment. That name must be a bug. So I guess I'll choose Fake News 23. Fake News 23. Da haben wir schon ein bisschen Zeit gespart. Ja. Okay, so we save time now. Wahr oder falsch? To still get the point. Okay, true or false and why? So, processing of data is only valid with the consent of the uh, person affected. So, is this statement correct? If I am uh, using the data from some third party, do I need their consent? Do you want to solve, Andreas? So, I, I wish it was, but uh, obviously it's not right, because Shufa wouldn't exist otherwise. So, yes, answer correct. 23 points from his uh, score. Die Einwilligung ist eine okay. So, consent is an important basis, but not the only one. There's always um, the legis a, the, a legitimate reason, for example, if you waive your rights in a contractual uh, form. So, consent is one, but it's not uh, the central or even the most important one. So, that was the second round, and this is the moment where we have to say goodbye to two people. So, let's look at the scoreboard. So, Andreas has how many points now? 164. Please applaud him. Huh? Uh, 74. So, how many does Müsli have? 110. Punkte. 110. That's less, but still worthy of an applause. So, how many does Katrin have? Over 9,000. Over 9,000. Wow. 1,632. Yeah, it looks like you can stay here. And how many does Oli have? 92. I'm sorry, that's not enough. So, that's why we have to say goodbye to Müsli and Oli with a warm applause.
Ihr ja. kriegt nachher noch einen Trostpreis, bleibt mal in der Nähe und noch nicht genau. so finden. You're getting a consolation ja. prize, uh, stay there und kriegt euren Preis. And you're going to come, come back on stage later. Now to the final of the two first contestants. Top contestants of the first of the second row uh, of the second um, round. The points that you're going to get in the last round are going to be multiplicators. Multiplikatorpunkte. Multiplikatorpunkte. Das heißt, wenn du keine Punkte machst und er macht. If you have no points. Ergebnis. Nämlich 1600 mal 0 ist ziemlich wenig. And he has won. He gets his result. So the first point, to win the first point, isn't very interesting, and then it's going to be interesting. Ah, okay. You come back. Whose turn is turn of both? Too complicated. Feel too complicated. Much too complicated. Kommen wir dann nacheinander dran oder müssen wir? Ihr werdet beide gefragt. Okay. You're go both going to be asked Gibt es bei uns die meisten Beschwerden? about what kind of video surveillance are there most complaints? Which of these draws the most complaints? It A. Pools B. Of employees, C. In private houses, D. On cemeteries. Andreas, what's your choice? You choose B, employees. Katrin chooses C in private houses. C is correct. Katrin has one point. It's really like that. Most complaints about video surveillance that we get is that I survey my neighbor and either they survey back or they go to the police and complain. Very difficult for us as well. The second question, and that again is a video question. Hello, Mr. Meyer. The, when I was still in a patrol car, I can only tell you the bends, great. And now, do you know what I do now? Now I'll ask, I'm now going to ask about number plates and I would, this, this woman, I'm not going to let this great woman pass me by. It is a one or two time only chance, so I'm now going to query that number plate in my database. Okay, now this fake police person here, this fake policeman, what is the exact question? Ah, right. We are dealing with a policeman who has seen a fantastic woman on his patrol and she was in a car with a number plate and he re memorized the number plate and now he has access to the police database and he goes ahead and looks up the number plate to find out the name of that lady, uh, residence, maybe contact details such as mobile phone number and goes ahead. And the question in that context is, is that police person, policeman allowed <coughs> to do this and what happens to them, to him if he goes ahead and does it? Now it's Katrin's turn to start. First, is he allowed? No, no, no. Well, he's a policeman. Police databases are made for policemen. Yes, they're made for police people if they have a, uh, a, a task, a case to process, and if they are authorized to look at that data. I'm sure that he's not investigating this woman, and the interest does not count. Well, maybe she went around the bend in illegal ways, but he didn't say that. True. Uh, what would happen to him? Well, trouble with the uh, 
authorities, Protection Commissioner and the Federal State Data Protection Commissioner, and a fine. Andreas, what do you think? Is he allowed and what would happen? Of course not. That was in the press recently and he will receive a fine. Nice. Good. You're both correct. A point to both of you. Applause. By the way, uh, according to the GDPR regulation, that was actually a, a point of contest that if anyone in, in public service, for example, police people, uh, if it's allowed to give them a fine or not, a lot of people were of the opinion that this is impossible, but some others also said, yeah, it is. And in this case, the police person received a fine of 1,500 euros because he had uh, interest in the person uh, that was not within the, uh, the course of the duty. And as a police person, they're always allowed to use their respective databases, but as a private person, they're not. So two points, one for each of you. There was a question in the audience. Ah, yeah. Um, who, who actually uh, supervises this? So, yeah, partly us. The, the question is, how do we get a notice of this, or how, how would we suspect this? In this particular case, for example, if the woman uh, notices that the person, uh, that the police guy is, is watching her, what how, how is he able to call me on my private number? They shouldn't be able to know it. And by now we can talk about this quite openly. So by now the police databases are now um, watched with a sort of a honeypot. Every um, access is logged and we do superficial checks on all of the requests that are being done. Maybe every hundred or so requests is looked at. Um, they're supervised by an internal data protection officer at the police. And they try to determine if it was an official case that they were working on or if they had private reasons to do so. And this actually works quite well. In those areas, there are no accesses on these databases anymore that are not being logged, which is great, because in this particular context, this is very important and very sensible to do. So two to one for Katrin. What's the... So this is a bug. Um, we already had that one today. Well, we're, we're already over time anyway, so we're going to just pass on to the next question. That's the wrong question. We had that. That's the right one. Mr. Kelber, I'm the Federal Commissioner for Data Protection and Information Protection. My question, what is the maximum fine that a federal agency can be fined? Does anyone remember Mr. Sparbier? Mr. Sparbier was in the previous game show. Again, what's the maximum fine that a federal agency can has to pay? Oh. Zero. Katrin answers none. Andreas says the same. Oh, I have some ideas. It would make more sense to act against the personally responsible person. Two correct answers, three to two for Katrin. A bit of background for the last question. Offices, just as um, I mean, agencies, just as uh, corporations, can be fined. But 
Several states have decreed that agencies cannot be fined. In other nations in Europe, this is different agencies can be fined. In Germany, no way to find a federal agency. Okay, and now we're back with our actor. Okay, yeah, of course, I know I cannot. But the Mr. Mayor, you have this website. There's a legal problem, technical problem. The mayor wants to evaluate the website statistics, how many men access our website, how many women. You can do all kinds of analytics. I don't quite know. So, can I use an analysis tool on my website, asks the mayor. Uh, I think there's a large search engine there, US-based. Isn't, do we need a consent for this, or can we just run this? Please ask your husband, who knows all the technical details. What is the legal status? Uh, I just don't know. Maybe your husband knows something. That would be nice if you could ask him. Right. Now, you are the husband of the colleague of this guy. Could someone translate? That was Southwest German dialect. And yes, that was hard for the interpreter to understand, too. Uh, I have it in better audio quality, but I didn't manage to get it worked into the video and, and cut, uh, edited. Okay, three questions. It's about whether Google Analytics can be used, and in this case, can Google Analytics be used by a, an authority, uh, the one that this guy works for? That is the first question. Shall we go through all three? Yes. The second question is, is an enterprise allowed to use Google Analytics? And thirdly, what if it is allowed? would these organizations have to adhere to? So, Andreas, your turn. First question, is a authority, an authority allowed to use Google Analytics? I'll say no, really. And also to the second question, are enterprises used, uh, allowed to use Google Analytics? No, again. All right, and third question, what they have to adhere to, what they have to look out for? Well, if they would do use this, they would have to remove the IP address, the last two bytes of it, at least that's what I know from PVIC, but with Google Analytics, it's clear that Google will not do this. That's why I'm saying no. So two no's and a response from Katrin. Authorities are completely agree, no, it's just not on. And uh, enterprises, yes, they can use Google Analytics, but they should take care to use these anonymizing variants where the last two bytes are made anonymous or pseudonym. And of course, they have to include this into in their privacy statement and they have to state a legal foundation on which they do this. But in my opinion, this does not require consent. It will be legitimate interest would be enough. Good. Alva, how will we score this? Zero points, both cases. I'll be quick. So, what is correct? Authorities are not allowed. You can explain that better than I can. Authorities would need a legal foundation. What would be possible would be a consent by the visitors of a authority website or those that are affected by the uh, measurement of website reach, but consent is excluded because according to the legal foundation uh, and uh, consent will not get me any further. Legitimate interest 6111 uh, is not a ground for processing, so that's the end of that. So that's what you two said, that's correct so far. Are enterprises allowed? Yes, well, it's always possible to obtain consent, but that would have to be informed consent, would have to be voluntary. Uh, that's not often the case. The third question, however, is an enterprise allowed? Yes, but, and thirdly, what has to be taken care of? And we have a great FAQ on our website regarding this, which you will find if you 
use this large search engine to look for tracking in websites. Only six items, just a few pages, and that tells you what companies have to take care of if they use Google Analytics. And the simplest answer is just don't bother use something where you don't need all this stuff, such as Matomo, or Matomo is the successor software of PIVIC, right? Yes, exactly. So host the data yourselves, the statistical data that you want to uh, collect, and don't pass it on to a third party. If you use Google Analytics uh, in the Google Analytics standard settings, you need informed, voluntary, active, previous, and uh, retractable consent by the users. It's not. It will not suffice what you see on many websites. If you continue using this website, you will uh, consent to the use of cookies. I have never seen a cookie banner that uh, will keep those five conditions. First, informed. You have to be told, are you, do you agree that all the, everything you do on this website is going to be transferred to transfer to Google or whoever operates this service. I've never seen a statement like that. Active. No tracking is allowed before you've said yes. Voluntary. It must be possible to answer yes and no. Retractable. You have to be able to, to rescind your consent, to take back your consent. Uh, previous, voluntary, active. What did I forget? Uh, one thing I forgot. So these are the obstacles. It's all in the FAQ on our website. And that is the position of the supervisory authorities. So none of you answered all three questions correctly. It's still a three to two score. And that gives us a winner for tonight. And that's Katrin. Yes, do stand up. We'll now go to the awarding ceremony. I'd like to ask the two colleagues, Musli and Oli, back to the stage because there'll be uh, actually there will be prizes. Katrin, first of all, there's this fantastic uh, certificate. Number two, you can enter your own names there. Oli, would you pass it on? Uh, and number four. And then, Katrin, you will win the original S South Southwest German Swabian uh, Maultaschen soup, whatever Maultaschen are. Uh, an original ventilator to you, Andreas, and uh, lots of materials from the Federal, from, from the Data Protection Commissioner. And, uh, and then that same speciality in chocolate form and a gift from the Porsche company, which you can exchange. Um, Alva, I would say, yes. Thanks a lot to all people that participated. We overran drastically, but now it's over. Short remark from me, I would like to make, we have this wonderful uh, protection principle of transparency in the GDPR, and you will n it would, will not have escaped you. Uh, I know some stuff, I don't know that much about crypto. I do data protection professionally as a lawyer, sorry. Uh, it's not excluded, but I have tried to be as fair as possible and, and pass a few questions on, and I didn't answer everything correctly. So even lawyers can be wrong. So lawyers are always right, or legal people are always right. That wasn't true anyway, it, it was the wrong answer. So, but the questions were extremely good, and I would really like to thank you. This was great. Katrin, now you'll have to live with that victory. Thanks to all of you, to all that took part. Alva and I will thank everyone that you have stayed with us for so long and have fun in the next few years. And with all these beautiful failures, GDPR-wise, and we'll keep reporting about them. Have a great time. Bye-bye.